Hello, everybody. This is Brad Saffer with Cisco's Global Education Industry Solutions Group, and I am thrilled today to bring you a panel of expert educators from the Shawnee Mission School District to talk about how they are using Cisco WebEx to transform teaching and learning. Uh, I know so many of you out there are uh, struggling with how do I adapt to the new realities of, of COVID-19. Uh, distance learning is, is hot, um, as well as all of the, the other services that you're trying to provide for your students. So uh, I wanted to give this panel a chance to share what they've been doing with Cisco, uh, because they've been doing this for a while. And, and uh, if you go to our website, you'll see that we've got a fantastic video uh, that showcases the efforts of Shawnee Mission, and, and I'll include a link to that video um, in this presentation. Um, so we have a, a wide range of perspectives on the call. The four uh, folks from Shawnee Mission uh, include Drew Lane, who's the Executive Director of ICT for Shawnee Mission School District, uh, Kathy Keith, who's the Principal of Westwood View Elementary School, and then two fantastic teachers, uh, Angela Harris, who teaches across a number of the schools in the district, uh, she's a math teacher and an innovation specialist across the district. Uh, she'll be speaking about uh, how she's been using WebEx Teams in her IN6, her intermediate uh, or integrated math six course. Uh, and then Amanda Jesse, who's a social studies teacher at Westwood View Elementary, she'll be talking about uh, parent communication and, and other elements. And it's kind of neat because with uh, Angela and Amanda talking about different subjects, it's nice to get a, a flavor of uh, how that, that will differ. So super excited. I want to thank you guys for, for joining us. And, and just to give a little bit of a preview of things you'll hear. Um, of course, distance learning is, is top of mind and a lot of what you'll be hearing about today uh, centers around teaching and learning, but you're also going to be hearing about how Shawnee Mission is using it, uh, using Cisco WebEx for student services, uh, being able to address special student needs across the community, um, how the district is using it for community engagement and parent engagement, as well as just administrative collaboration. So we, we, we have that element of the staff and the faculty and the teachers needing to work together. Uh, it's another uh, great uh, use case for us. Um, so before we get into the discussion, I wanted to turn it over to Drew to give a little bit of background about Shawnee Mission and their history with Cisco. So Drew, over to you. Oh, thank you, Brad. Shawnee Mission School District is uh, what I'd consider a suburban school district in the Kansas City metro area. We're in Johnson County on the Kansas side of the state line. We have about uh, 27,500 students. And our district covers 14 small um, municipalities in the area. We began our journey with, uh, with Cisco WebEx probably about five years ago. And at the time, what we were looking for was a digital collaboration platform for the most part that really was going to be easy for us to use. It was going to be fairly easy to deploy. Uh, understanding that everybody's definition of easy might be different. Uh, we were looking for something that had true end-to-end -end encryption so that our conversations were private and secured and we knew uh, where that data was going. And we were looking for a platform that really was kind of built from the ground up to be uh, enterprise class, you know, so that would be scalable and, and allow us to onboard uh, large groups. Um, also have things around legal retention, uh, strong analytics, uh, a good support structure. And uh, and then we also were, you know, we're really concerned about privacy. So when we saw um, the Cisco uh, meetings data privacy data sheet and their, um, I think it's the, called the trust portal, uh, that was kind of a, a, a strong seller for us as well. So in a nutshell, that's us, Brad. Awesome. Thank you very much. Well, let's uh, let's jump in here. Um, I'm going to keep this slide up while we're talking so that uh, you kind of know who's who's who in this. Uh, but I want to start with Angela. Angela, you're, you're teaching across five schools in the district. Talk to us a little bit about how you use WebEx, how you started, and, and how you're using it to drive learning games with your students. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, as Drew mentioned, we took this on a few years back. and um, as soon as it came to us with you, I wanted to know how I could employ this in my classroom. And so I went to Kathy and Kathy Keith and said, you know, I'd really like to have this. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this or how I'm going to make this work, but I just thought that it could um, enhance my learning. So I got all the permissions that we needed to get that up and going. And I just worked with my students and I told them the first day that we started working with this, I said, I don't know what we're going to do with this and I don't know how to make this work, but let's figure out what this can do. And so each day we worked with it and figured out a new 
thing, if you will, that we could do with WebEx. And every day we were getting more and more excited because we learned quickly that I had, you know, students in my room that had visual concerns. And so they would have to be placed near the front of the room so that they could see. And no longer did we have to do that. They could now see everything I was sharing with them on their iPad. They could enlarge it. Um, they could write on there. There was a lot that they could do that was not previously an option that was helping our students with special needs that we needed to consider in our classroom. So that was really exciting. But then I quickly learned that also, if the kids were out because they weren't feeling well, they could WebEx into my classroom and they were not missing instruction. And a lot of teachers know that it's a lot of work to get these packets together when your students are missing the day's worth of work. And so you no longer have to do that. All of the work can be dropped into teams so they can see exactly what they missed. And you can also record the lesson. So if they want to watch at home or if they want to join live, and still participate, even though they may not be well enough to come to school, they could still participate or listen to the lesson as we were doing it in class. So there were many advantages that we learned in that first year to using WebEx in the classroom. Well, after we understood how we were going to employ that in just in the classroom with the students, we did start branching out to parent communication and using it for other needs. But then the need arose to teach integrated math six to an additional school. So uh, it was the first week of school a couple of years ago that I was asked if I could teach my integrated math six at West Review, but then also teach another school that was in need of an integrated math six teacher. And previous to WebEx, the students would have to be taken to another school. They would receive their instruction from 7 to 730, and then we would have to bus them back to their home schools. So this was nice in that we could have one teacher support this additional school, which has now branched out to many schools, um, but we could, I could host that class, if you will, from my home base at West Review. So last year I had my, my homeroom kids, so I had 20-ish kids in my own class, and then I took on an additional six from a neighboring school. That turned out to be really successful, so this year I'm now teaching to five schools uh, across the district, and I'm housed in two schools, so I'm now at Shawano and Comanche, but I teach to five schools and some of our students I've never outside of the initial setup. I don't see them face to face, but I have learned that you can still build the relationships that teachers are trying to build. You can still get all the same instruction. You we have data to support that not only are the kids learning, but they are learning at an accelerated rate. And so when we got our map test scores back and other things to look at to justify that there is learning occurring, we were so excited to see the exponential growth from these kiddos. I had kids that were in the 70th percentile, meaning you know they're performing better than 70 out of 100 kids, but they're now all above the 90th percentile. So we were able to see incredible, exciting growth. And these kids were being taught they, um, only using WebEx. So as you know, as you kind of learn how to use the WebEx meeting component to teach, um, I use a, a document camera almost every day. So kids are seeing me work the problem. I'm talking to them just like I'm talking to you now. But then I also have the Teams component, which is where I put all of their homework. So it's nice that everything is time stamped and dated so you know exactly what day this assignment was given you know exactly what the assignment is supposed to be if parents need to see what the assignment is they can look on their child's ipad and you can see mrs harris dropped this assignment on this day and here's what they're supposed to be doing. so it's really clear there's no confusion around what's being assigned and when so that's been nice and then the additional component that's really been added for me this year is the spanish translation bot which um, as I moved to these schools that have a higher um, rate of Spanish speaking students, I, we didn't really use the Spanish translation bot at West Review. So I kind of dug into that this year and we used it with students, we used it with parents. I was using it to translate Spanish um, verbiage for our, for our website. It was just incredible how reliable and dependable it was and it's quick. So we have our ELL teachers, so our English language learner teacher, and our sixth grade teachers using that integration bot all the time. So that is a game changer. And I honestly just don't know looking back how I could even teach anymore without using WebEx because it's just become such an integral part of how I teach now and how our students are learning. And for me, it was so exciting that my kids that are in integrated math six, when we had to step out of our classrooms, 
this was still normal for them. So whereas a lot of learning and teaching was interrupted for us, this is normal. And so the low question didn't matter. So it was really exciting that their learning has continued as normal. That's great. So the, and just to be clear, the integrated math six is an advanced math class. So you have just, you know, a small portion or fraction of students at, at these different schools who would be eligible for it. Um, so the fact that you were able to, to teach them virtually meant that there was a consistency in the, the teaching they were getting from you, obviously, uh, but also just an efficiency. I'm um, just thinking about how difficult it would be to have to get up in the morning and drive to one location and then drive back, right? Whereas with the situation you have now, those students can, can just simply step into another room like it's a, a regular class at their scheduled time and be done. Yeah. And they're not coming back to the school, you know, with really not enough to do during that math block that they have at their home school. So instead right. of the, the classroom teacher trying to find work for them to do, they're in their own math class getting yeah. specific instruction that each child needs. So when we're thinking about individualized learning plans for our students, that's exactly what we're providing them. So even though I'm not there face to face, they are getting the instruction that they need for the level of math that they're ready for. And that's exciting that as a district, we can provide that for each student because you're absolutely right. Most schools have an average of five students that qualify for integrated math six. And the goal is to get them ready for integrated math seven or even algebra, which is eighth grade math. So there's a lot of work to be done in that year and it does move quickly, but it's so nice that we're able to meet their needs where they are. Right. Quite one more question before I, I move on to Kathy. Um, was it hard to sort of integrate or balance having kids in, in the classroom with you and others online or what, how did you manage that just from an interaction standpoint? No, it was not challenging at all. Um, so I would be at Comanche or Shawano every other day. And so I would kind of bounce back and forth between the kids that were actually with me live. Um, but no, they participated on their iPad exactly like the kids who were not there. And they would still raise their hand in WebEx Teams and participate in exactly the same way so that they understood the routine of it, if you will. So when I'm not there, it was seamless. It didn't make a difference if I was physically there or not. The instruction and the interaction was exactly the same. And I think that was key to the success of that because if you're asking kids to change modes of operation every day or every couple days, it can get really confusing. But to teach them the routine and the expectations and how to use this in a way that's successful for them to learn and just stick with it, that was, for me, was the easiest way to manage that. Excellent, oh, that's great. Well, let's, uh, let's turn to an administrator perspective. And uh, Kathy, you're a principal. Talk to us a bit about how WebEx has uh, impacted and changed how you, uh, how you operate your, your school and, and uh, all the other ways around community engagement and parent communication. Right, uh, Brad. First of all, um, I like to think of WebEx as just a way to solve my daily problems. And the way that it came to Westwood View is after Drew introduced it to us is that I had a family that was gonna them to leave uh, due to an illness and they were going to be out of town for uh, 12, 12 weeks at the minimum. And so, uh, you know, collaborating with that parent on how we can still educate their children was the purpose of why we wanted to look at WebEx. And so we were able to have those children um, log into their classrooms daily, even though they were hours away and not miss instruction. So now it's just a part of my thinking. Anytime there's a problem at Westwood View, I think, well, how can we solve this with WebEx? And so one of the other problems that we have is that we have to share teachers sometimes. Um, so a lot of my special teachers and my special education teachers are uh, part-time. And so if I need them at my building for something that they are in another building for, I can always WebEx them in, whether it be a staff meeting, an IEP meeting, which is an individual education plan for special education students, um, they can just WebEx and join us no matter where they are. Um, that also helps on the parent aspect of it when they are not able to join us, say for an, an IEP meeting, they're able to stay at work and log into our meeting and still have the same access and, the, and then the same conversation as everybody else at the table. Other things that, you know, problems arise at school is that when I have first or second year teachers that need to go off site and uh, collaborate with another teacher, that causes um, a missed class and somebody to have to cover a classroom. Where now with the WebEx tool, I'm using a lot of the recording aspect of it. So my first and second year teachers with their mentors will record a lesson that they do in the classroom 
and then they will get together in their plan time to collaborate instead of having an empty classroom with a sub in it. So that's a very nice uh, feature that we use as well. Um, when we decided we were going to shut down schools for this uh, COVID-19, uh, um, I wasn't in a panic at all because I thought, well, we can just WebEx the rest of the calendar throughout the year. So anything that's on that calendar, I told my teachers, you know, we're going to continue with it. So with our kindergarten roundup, we did a virtual roundup. With our staff meetings, we do virtual staff meetings. Um, and actually, I, I use the team teams of it as well and organize each grade level and and they drop all of their virtual learning documents into it so we all have access to it and we share all the documents that way as well so again just solving problems through technology i think is is the key to using webex in schools successfully that's great and um i know that uh, you know angela talked about her her im6 class um give me your perspective because you were involved in that in having to sell the idea that some kids are going to be getting their learning, you know, through a, a device rather than sitting in the room with Angela. So that was a change in the model, right? So share a little bit about what happened there and how you responded. All right. Well, Angela was my math teacher. And then when she became the district um, uh, teacher across the way, she um, was going to leave Westwood View. And I knew that replacing a high math teacher like that was going to be a challenge. So um, I was not able to find a replacement teacher that was highly qualified to teach that math class. So I reached out to Angela to see if she would still be willing to take on our kids uh, through WebEx. Um, and so she agreed to take on the five, actually I have 10 kids this year, um, to go into math, math class. And the parents were not that happy about it because my parents are pretty traditional and they uh, they really don't appreciate all that technology has to offer us. And so um, it took a little conversation and a little explaining of what that was going to look like. But I think once you get the kids there and engage that the kids uh, can sell it themselves because um, they love the technology piece of it. And in fact, the other uh, piece of that too was um, teacher evaluations that I didn't get to speak about yet. But mm -hmm. as a principal walking into a classroom and evaluating a teacher, that's a pretty tr traditional thing. But when you use WebEx as a tool to do that, it allows you to see different areas of that classroom. So I can sit in my office and WebEx into a classroom and do an evaluation. And at first I thought, well, why would I want to do that? I wouldn't be able to see what the kids are doing and see the engagement piece. But really it allows you to see a lot more because I can go into her classroom or any classroom on WebEx and I can see what the kids' conversation is about that assignment. I can see their answers and their replies. I, see, I can see the parents' conversation with that uh, classroom. And mm -hmm. not only can I see what the teacher is doing and how the kids are reacting, but I can also see school work that's being done, the answers and the questioning and, and the parents' response as well, um, which is huge. Um, so yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. So professional development in there, you know, the, the whole idea of, of being able to, uh, to, to leverage the best teacher, right? Which is, it is hard for school districts. A lot of people that will be listening to this are probably saying, gee, I, you know, I'm having a hard time hiring for this role or that role, but to be able to have a shared resource allows you to, uh, you know, maximize that resource and 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 have that person, you know, in Angela's case, meet the needs of a, of more students than she she normally would. So that's Absolutely. that's fantastic. All right, well, let's get another teacher's perspective. Amanda Jesse, you're a social studies teacher. Talk to us a bit about uh, what you're getting out of WebEx and kind of your your perspective. Absolutely. So um, Angela and I talked together when she was still over at Westwood View. And she kind of got a jump start on this about a year, year and a half before I did. And so it was nice to have a mentor to kind of go pick her brain, uh, you know, go down there and go, okay, I need to do this. How can I do it? So I uh, started kind of getting into it slowly and then really kind of um, it, it took off on its own because it became something that was very natural to use in the classroom. So we use it. Um, I have four different classes that I teach social studies to. And so it, it is a great place to put assignments so that there's a common um, theme between the different classes. We use it a lot for parent communication as well. We wanted, Drew kind of spoke about the, the privacy issue. We wanted to have a space where we could have conversations with parents, um, but that would remain private. So for each of our students, um, we created a space um, with their parents, with them, uh, with the four uh, academic subject area teachers with Kathy, 
if they're seeing Angela for I am six, she can be in there as well. And um, then we've got other kids with specialized needs that we can also put those teachers in there who are seeing those kids. And so we can talk back and forth with each other and we know it's a private area, but we also keep kind of that running log then of the conversations that have gone on um, rather than having to go back and find what email that was, what date that was, was it from mom or dad, work or home email, it's all in one place. And so it's really streamlined that parent communication, but it's also included our fifth and sixth graders in that communication as well. So giving them some more of that ownership and being part of that team rather than having their education done for them um, as far as the communication goes, you know, have it being done for them by the adult, they're part of it now too. Um, the, we have used it um, for our different um, subject areas. So I have all of my different units um, with a social studies team divided out into the different spaces. So I can drop things in there. Um, we're using it right now for our distance learning. And so the kids knew that, okay, there's new spaces in there that are gonna look a little bit different because now I am recording my lesson more and dropping those in there for kids that can't participate during our live times. Um, and so we've created some spaces, but they know how to join those. You go click on it, you click join, and you're in and you have access to the materials that we're using. Um, it's really been pretty seamless. There was, as we started using um, meetings more and more, the parents, it took them about a week to adjust to the new ways that we were using this, and then they were fine with it. Their kids were able to master it. It honestly was the parents asking more of the questions where the kids got it right away. Um, and so to be able to use that, and it helps now, it helps at school to maintain those relationships. Um, you know, I know for my two kids that I have with me at home now, seeing faces of other people is the biggest thing they miss. They miss seeing their friends. And so this gives them an opportunity to not only continue their education with us, but to have that social interaction that you just can't get by giving them simply a choice menu and asking them to go complete these assignments on their own. It also gives them access to me outside of school hours, um, whether that's during traditional school or during distance learning. Um, I always have my phone with me for the most part. And if they have a question at six o'clock at night when they're doing homework with mom or dad and they're stressing about it, they don't have to wait 14 hours to see me at eight the next right. morning to get an answer to it and wind themselves up so much that they're already spinning by the time they get to me. I can answer it immediately with just as much ease as um, answering a text message. And that's been really, really powerful to give those kids that extra help without it costing me much time at all as far as how right. well. You get to it right away. Yeah, because students today, have become, I think, and a lot of us, maybe all of us, have become used to instant answers, right? This is the world of of uh, smartphones and Amazon and all this stuff. So that's uh, that's great. So it's interesting the the way you describe the use of Teams, having you know, you've got your classroom spaces, but that team space for the individual student. It's a neat idea where you can keep that running record year to year, and then the right people come in and out depending on. Uh, the, on the year and the grade. That's, yeah, that's great. That's what we've talked about doing possibly next year is also then developing a space that can be kind of an ongoing portfolio for the kids using that space so that their parents can see the things that they're working on. Um, and then they can just see their growth through the years if they scroll back to projects from previous grades. So it's, it's a really, really neat tool to use. Right, um, right. Just looking at the other things on my list. Sorry, I didn't speak about virtual field trips yet. We've done mm -hmm. several virtual field trips with uh, my kids have been to the Smithsonian uh, American Art Museum, and we talked about colonial art and some of the themes through that. We've gone to the Denver uh, Nature and Science Museum and talked about the mummification process. We've gone to um, the National Park Service's Midwest Archaeology Center um, and talked with archaeologists about their processes where those are not places that my kids have access to because they're in such a variety of locations, and we've used um, the room kit mini to connect to those and to be able to to bring those things to our kids. And I have one coming up in about a week and a half with the National Archives that we're going to go ahead and and be able to continue to do that. My kids will do it on their devices. Um, 
by watching it come through mine uh, because I can share that with them through meetings while they're watching and being able to still do some of those things that there's so many things that have been canceled um, or changed to a different uh, method of presentation that it's yeah, nice yeah. to keep some things similar so that the kids have that feeling of continuity. Wow, that's amazing. So how do you, how does that work? You find somebody at the archives and you say, take, you know, walk us around. There's, I mean, they were literally experiencing it, right? Most of them have a presenter who has like a green screen. And so they right. can get the images that they want to use. Okay. And then they'll go through them with the kids and the kids can interact with them and ask questions. And some of them have had them get up. We went to the Smithsonian, get up and uh, model the same pose that this statue was and compare the pose of this statue to another. And what does it say about the characteristics the artist was trying to get across? And what does it say about what that person was going through during a certain historical time period uh, that that was what the artist wanted to portray? So, yeah, it's been really cool um, to be able to do some of those things that it has a lot more power when coming from some of those sources outside of me just saying, here's the stuff. We can go to an expert, we can engage them in a way that normally we wouldn't be able to. Field trips get expensive and I'm not yeah. going to go to Washington DC with a group of students realistically. Um, so to bring those things in has been really powerful in the classroom. That is fantastic. Well, those are, those are great examples. Um, let's turn now to uh, the IT side of the house. And uh, Drew, you're, you're responsible for making sure all this technology works across the district and you you also have a different lens on this from the standpoint of uh, of not just things working well but you know we're talking about students and their data and their information and and so you have a uh, a lot of responsibilities on your shoulders around um, you know privacy security and compliance so um, you know talk to us a bit about that from your perspective sure you know gosh those those folks are a hard act to follow I know. Um, <laughs> they've, really told you, they've really told you stuff that's fun to hear. The stuff I'm going to talk to you about is just stuff that people are kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess that's fun. I guess that's all right. <laughs> well, we probably wouldn't have done our due diligence without thinking about those things, you know. And so one of the things that's on the list there is administrative collaboration. And very much like you've already heard about teachers collaborating with students, teachers with other teachers, teachers with principals, all that, uh, you take that clear to the very top uh, at the district level. That kind of collaboration goes on amongst uh, um, you know, district administration and officials. And so I don't think there's anything there that is probably particularly more interesting than what you've already heard. So we'll skip right into kind of the security, privacy, and compliance pieces that, that really kind of underpin all of the stuff you've heard about there before. You know, security is important to us, making sure we know where this data is, we know who has access to the data, we know where the data resides, those types of things, and where it won't go. Those are very important things to us. You know, a lot of the stuff that goes across our WebEx platform deals with minor students. And so you've got to be particularly careful about what happens with their data. So we don't want that data getting siphoned off. We don't want it going anywhere where it's not supposed to go anything like that. And, and uh, this platform provi provides us a level of security that we're confident that that doesn't happen. You know, as an example, we know that we know that it has end-to-end -end encryption. And then we also know that uh, the, the content is stored in, in one place and those encryption keys are stored in another place. And, and Cisco is you know, pretty transparent about that in that they'll also say, and, and listen, we're, we're happy to store your, your encryption keys for you if you'd like us to, but if you'd rather store them yourselves, here are some specifications on what you would need to do that and then you can certainly store those encryption keys yourself. And I think that's probably uh, philosophically a, a, a positive in, in the case that we made for WebEx and in, in its use in that it was just kind of that that yes, we agree, security is important. Privacy, along with that, you know, um, knowing knowing who is in your meeting, knowing who you have in your meeting, who is not in your meeting, having control over who comes into the meetings and doesn't go come into the meetings, those types of things, I think that's very important mm -hmm. in terms of privacy. Uh, in the continuous learning environment, that's important because it's hard enough getting a young person's attention when you're in the same physical space it can be, uh, you know, a factor of 10 harder when they're not in the same physical space. And so if you have to worry about, you know, errant uh, entries into your into your meeting or, or classroom in this case or whatever, people you don't know, um, it makes it it makes it pretty challenging to keep kids on task. Plus, you're never sure about what kind of behavior you're going to see from those folks that would, would come into one of those. And so I think that's you know, that's that's a concern as well. 
And then, you know, in, in one of the earlier slides, I talked about scalability and those types of things. And down here, we're dealing with the concept of compliance. And compliance, it, it really, there's, there's several touch points there where compliance is important to us. Obviously, keeping student data private. We have mandates in, at the state level, and there are mandates at the federal level for keeping student data private. Uh, whether you're talking about FERPA or the Kansas Data uh, Protection, uh, Student Data Privacy Act, those types of things, those are compliance points as well. But because of the breadth of use we see in the district, there are other potential compliance points that we have around HIPAA or some of the medical stuff that we keep. But mm -hmm. then also in, in terms of um, open meetings and, and whether or not these conversations that we're having, if we're having them with, uh, with elected officials and those types of things are accessible to the public. And so making sure that we have the tools to do e-discovery and retention and those types of things so that we could provide those resources should somebody ask for them or should that become necessary. That's a that's an area of compliance that's also important to us. And the, the tools that we have in the back end of the WebEx platform makes that possible for us. So, you know, I think when you combine what we talked about earlier around, around ease of use, scalability and ease of deployment, you couple that with the security, privacy, and compliance pieces, and then you put that together with all the wonderful stuff you heard from our teachers and our administrator about collaboration in general. Um, it, it, it made a really solid case for us to adopt it, and it's, up to this point, has paid high dividends for us. And that's about it, Brad. That's fantastic. Yeah, and I'll just... Uh... You, you mentioned the, the being able to control who uh, who's in your room. Uh, I'll just turn to Angela real quick. Angela, you you just had a recent experience with that where you uh, you luckily were able to to manage uh, to manage a possible uh, intruder. You want to chat about that real quick? Absolutely. So again, teaching sixth grade math, I had uh, Mr. Big Mac and Michael Jackson that tried to join my class. And it took me a second to realize that's not one of my students because I just thought maybe someone changed their name, which they do. And we've told them many times, like, don't change your name. It should be your first and last name. And that should be it. So I thought someone was just kind of goofing around. It took me a second. But when I realized that it was not a student that was supposed to be there, I quickly just went to the menu at the top. I was able to expel that student from the space right then. And then I could lock my room and admit students that should be in my class as they continued to join. So for me, that was just amazing that I could protect the integrity of my classroom so quickly. So I could just get rid of the, the problem and, and I didn't have to deal with it. It wasn't like it was ongoing and I just was going to have to have a conversation with that person to ask them to leave. I could just make that decision as the teacher and go on my class without it causing further interruptions because they did continue to try to join. And you can see there's an orange little bar that pops up telling you the name of the person trying to join. So as I saw students that I knew should be there, I could allow them entry. And the ones that were not supposed to be there, you can just ignore them and they're not impacting your class and your students aren't seeing it. So it's not disruptive. Mm -hmm. That's, so that's great. Yeah. And I love the best practice around how, you know, the naming conventions, because that actually gave you a clue to that, right? You, you knew that Mr. Big Mac was not on your roster. <laughs> and I so, would have asked yeah. the sixth grader to change their name to that either. So that's why I had to think about that first and think, okay, is this someone being silly? And then once you could look at it and recognize that's not my student, I could act quickly. And I think that's so important right now, as Drew was talking about, to keep their attention, but also to make sure that there's integrity around that classroom. Great. All right. Well, thank, thank you, panel, for each of you for uh, sharing your individual stories. We have a few minutes left. I want to just uh, open it up to, uh, I'm going to ask just a couple more questions that, that uh, I'll open it up to anyone to answer. So the first is around access. And what I mean by that is it's great to have tools, but if you can't get connected to the internet or you don't have a device, you know, all of this is out the window. Now, granted, this is outside the scope of, of really what Cisco WebEx is, but I want, uh, you, want you guys to comment on what, what you've been doing in that context, because you do have uh, a very diverse uh, set of students and, and uh, you know, you've, you've done a great job making sure uh, that they all have, uh, you know, access to equal opportunities. So, so talk, I don't know if Angela, that's you or Kathy, but talk about what you're doing around that access to help. I think Kathy and I probably have different experiences, so she might want to speak to her um, school because it's just a slightly different. And the schools that I currently serve, they're both Title I schools. And so with... And say what that is, just for those of us Kathy, that could, don't you know. 
<laughs> not properly because I just don't want to. It, it's so title schools are based on free and reduced population and numbers, and so then the government uh, those schools so higher needs schools. Got it. Right. Okay. Thank and you. And so I just didn't want to use the wrong words there. And so, um, you know, we have students that we have very valid concerns about. Do they have access to internet? And so we've had to employ a number of things to make sure that we were connecting with those families. So starting with reaching out to them via phone, but you have to remember a lot of our families are Spanish speaking families. So we had to get translators or um, we were using our Spanish translation bot, people who have some Spanish uh, speaking experience or knowledge, they were able to type in what they wanted to say and make sense enough of it that they could have a conversation with a family member to ensure that they were getting the information necessary to connect with spectrum or whomever is in their area that's servicing internet at this time but it has been a very large undertaking fortunately for us we are one-to-one -one, so that means every child has an ipad at the elementary level so we don't have to worry about them not having a device they have the device but they did not necessarily have access to internet and there has been even some delays of a week or more of getting them set up but at this point We've contacted every single family and we are either in the process of getting them set up or they already have been set up. So it, it was a large undertaking, but well worth it. And, and at the end of the day, to feel like our students have a device and they're able to connect with us is exactly what we were, we were aiming for. So I think the whole team did a great job. That's great. Yeah, I think, you know, we've on previous calls, we've highlighted the fact that most service providers now have these free offers out there. But what you just pointed out was the importance of tying that together with a student. And that's, that's the hard thing. And that burden, uh, for better or worse, uh, falls on you. Probably for the kids, the better, because you, you know how to get it done. But it's just another, another thing on your plate. Um, okay. So a lot of people listening to this are, are, you know, they're in this tough boat of trying to adapt to the new reality of having to do distance learning, right? So, again, open question to the panel. What advice would you give these people who are struggling with this, you know, adoption, whether it's just themselves uh, trying to get on board with leveraging technology to do their job virtually or trying to get their peers on board with this because they're relying on them? What are, you know, you guys have been through this now. You've been, you, you, you know, this is, your new normal, right? You, you guys were ready for this moment, um, but it probably wasn't easy right out of the gate. So what, what's your advice to uh, those that are new to this whole distance learning and distance services? I'll jump world. in on this one, Brad, if that's okay. Um, I, have, I, work in a, I work in a team of four teachers where we each are teaching a different subject and I have social studies and we're all at a variety of places in our careers. Um, we've got one of the teachers who is a year or two away from retirement. We've got another one who has been in one position for years and now is moving into a classroom position. We had one teacher who was brand new to our building this year, but had several years of teaching experience behind her. And so we were all coming from different ways. And the biggest thing I would say is give it time. And I know that's something that that is easier said than done right now, because it feels like we need to be so immediate with getting this together. In the traditional sense, sense showing people how to do what they're already doing but do it in a more streamlined manner what we've run to run into is that even within our school building even through different grade levels people have their favorites as far as ways to do different things but that becomes really confusing for parents um, when for their second grade child they're going here for their fifth grade child they're going here for communication so this really streamlines it um, the same thing among our four teammates, it really streamlines communication for us. Now we're meeting virtually to plan for our professional learning communities, for our staff meetings through teams and through meetings. And it makes it a lot easier that way. Um, I, I uh, pinged Angela earlier this year when my two most reluctant colleagues, um, we were sitting in a meeting and they were talking about how difficult it is with email to find a certain parent communication. You know, I know right. the parent wrote me this, but when was it? Was it a week ago, a month ago? Anyway, and so both of them turned to me and said, can we just use WebEx next year? I don't want, I want it all in one place. 
And so I did a little happy dance and I messaged Angela, like, oh my gosh, you're not gonna believe how amazing this is. And so that that element of time of getting used to it, the same thing for our parents, this first week and week and a half of distance learning, there were so many questions of how we were gonna be doing this in a different way and the things we were gonna add to it. I had not used meetings as much as Angela had. So for a lot of my parents um, who didn't have a kid in the IM6 program, end of it was new and so being able to get them comfortable with it get them comfortable with yes your child is still going to see me it's just going to be through their screen uh, took some time for them to realize okay this is a solid platform to be able to do these things and it works the way it says it's supposed to and so once the parents bought into it and kathy kind of mentioned that earlier with with angela going to a digital teacher for a lot of these kids once the parents realized that there's not a whole lot of difference to this other than whether it's physically face to face or digitally face to face for how we can facilitate this learning. So I just say patience and time and find don't don't bite off all of it at once. Find yeah. the one or two things that make your life easier and, and jump off of those when you're ready. I just want to add to that as I was walking through a lot of my colleagues through how to get set up in this new normal that we're experiencing right now. I had to step back and I would just say this to anyone that's adopting this on a large scale. You have to understand that all of your adults are at different places. You have some people who are yay technology and they get it and they can adapt really, really quickly. And then you have people that are just going to need you to tell them the same directions a few times and they're going to have to play with it. And that's fine. You just have to be patient, let people pick it up as it works for them. And as Amanda just said, find one or two things that you can become really good at and then build from there. So if you know you just want to teach, then great. Don't get everybody set up on teams right out of the gate. Master meetings and have a class where you're talking face to face and you're able to share the information with them. And as you become comfortable with that, and especially if you have a moment to be face to face with your kids, like maybe going into next year, set up teams and figure out how to organize it in a way that works for you. Because when you have the whole package working together, it really does make our new normal a lot easier to manage. And so I'm seeing people who were a little reluctant to get on at the beginning are now sending me emails. I'm practically a pro now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. like they're ready yeah. for advanced features in just a few weeks. So just start small and know that it's okay to just play around. You can't mess anything up. Just if you don't know what it does, try it. I mean, your kids are going to say, well, this is what it did or nope, that didn't work. It kicked us off or what they're going to give you the feedback and you can learn together. And I think that allowing your kids to see that you're a learner too is really powerful. That is great. And they Good will advice. learn it quickly and they will teach you what they have learned and figured <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, look, there's a chat feature in meeting. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, you know, just all the things that they, they like to poke buttons and see what happens. And, and uh, I've learned a lot through them. Yeah, excellent. All right. Um, well, one last question. Uh, put on your crystal, or put on your, put on your hat, look in your crystal ball, um, and talk a little bit about how you see things changing for Shawnee Mission as you move forward, particularly, I'm interested in not just getting through the rest of the year per se, but look at next year and then sort of more long-term. Um, how do you see this COVID crisis affecting just how you teach and, and, and you know, how you have to adapt uh, in the future? As best you can, just your, your open thoughts before we close out. And that's open to anybody. I'll talk. They all know I talk all the time. So uh, the biggest thing is just the com like Angela was talking about the comfort level that more teachers have had um, because this has been a have to. We had to find a way to communicate with our students that was meaningful and that was real. More teachers have become comfortable with this platform. With that is something that we had had multiple conversations as far as how do we expand this further and further within the district. How do we get the buy in for it when other teachers are going, oh, I've, I've got a different way. It's not as great, but I've got a way that I'm dealing with that. Now to see it all in one place, um, you know, teachers seeing that I can have my, my staff meeting time with my principal, even if I have to set an appointment somewhere or pick my child up because I can get it on the phone and mute my video and be able to listen and contribute. Just different ways that we, um, 
can give materials to kids. Just the fact that that there is there are different ways other than just the traditional stand and deliver approach to reach the kids and that this is a tool to do that. Um, Drew and Kathy and Angela and I have all kind of talked about at the beginning of next school year, um, putting together a class and going, okay, now you've touched WebEx, you've messed with it and used it in a few ways that worked for you. Now, what can we answer? What questions can we help you get into? Like Angela was talking about the advanced features to help you now when we move back into a, a traditional physical classroom. Great. I would just say, I think that our district is going to find some opportunities to use this technology to support the development of our teachers, which will um, then support how our students are learning. So if we think about integrated math six, I'm teaching multiple schools right now, just in, in this area, but think about, you know, when you have honors classes in high school or even in your middle school classes, and they might be smaller class sessions, but you could use the same technology to have maybe an honors teacher teaching in multiple buildings at one time. If we're, we're th talking about like uh, professional development opportunities, you can find teachers that are teaching similar subjects and group them together instead of being confined by the building in which you belong, so to speak, you can branch out if you need to, if you've got a teacher and you'd really like them to see what another teacher that's excelling in their content is doing, they can WebEx in and another teacher could teach your class and their class at the same time while you're observing what this teacher is doing. Um, you know, there's been times that I was teaching IM6, then Kathy would walk in and, and I'm on the board, so she can see exactly what I'm doing. She can see how the kids are interacting and we can have a conversation so I can gain feedback to grow from what she saw in the room. There's just so many opportunities that we've not had before because when you're thinking about your school building and the four walls in which contain that building, so to speak, those no longer exist now and we're seeing that on a huge scale and I think that the power in this is just getting teachers together that wouldn't normally get together to brainstorm new ideas and new ways to connect with kids and reach kids that they would not have otherwise even had an impact on and I think that we're going to see strength in teachers that we didn't really know was even there because they've never really had the chance to connect outside of yeah. maybe once a year when we did some sort of instructional fair or something like that we're going to I think we're going to see our whole community of Shawnee Mission coming together to really work together in new ways and I think our kids our students are really going to reap the benefit of that that's awesome super well said all right well um any final thoughts before we wrap anything we didn't get to that you wanted to say that I didn't ask or that you just thought of Brad, I would close with maybe two specific points Please. about the lasting impression, the lasting impression that I think the this situation will make on us. One is out, outside of the scope of all of this, I think this probably gives everyone ample insight into looking at internet access in terms of utility rather than entertainment. You know, I think that's one of the things that our country has probably fallen behind the rest of the world on, and that is to take the it in that frame of reference that that access to the internet is is not just entertainment or infotainment anymore that this it really is more of a utility type thing and and i'd be interested to see how that develops over the next 18 months to two years to you know five or ten years and the second thing is i think that education probably will fundamentally change because you're going to have a number of parents and families out there who even after this subsides are still going to say, I still would rather have my child doing their learning virtually. I want them to get the, the social emotional, so clubs and athletics and those types of things. I think that'd be great. But during the day, I really enjoyed having them at home. I think they had a better experience for whatever reason that might be. And and I I'm I think school districts will be hard pressed to not accommodate that at the peril of losing students to districts that will accommodate that. Because the other thing we've learned here is that geography is, is for all intents and purposes, irrelevant. There's really no reason why Angela or Amanda couldn't teach students who are in a neighboring district or not neighboring district in the state of Kansas. Um, 
So I wonder what kind of an impact that will have long range. And I think that the underpinnings of a good collaboration platform will make those types of things possible in, in, in the tactical future and the strategic future as well. Just my two cents worth. I was, I was. Jumping off of that, I think it's going to be parents are going to find that there are um, ways that they can get back some of their time as well, as far as the the convenience, not only of having their child be able to WebEx in when they're sick, maybe that wasn't something they had ever dealt with before, um, but also as far as teacher meetings, principal meetings, IEP meetings for parents who um, for, come from a different set of backgrounds, you might have someone who's an hourly worker and it costs them money to come mm -hmm. sit with us and to talk about their student. And so if we can give them back the drive time to and from work, that's going to make a difference. Um, they're going to be more likely to, to be able to meet with us. We're going to be able to more efficiently communicate with them um, because we can give them that time back. So things like parent teacher conferences where some schools have much lower attendance rates because it's a choice between do I go to work or do I go visit about my child? Um, that choice to some extent has been made easier. That's a great point. That's a great point. Kathy, anything from you? You haven't had. Yeah, uh, I was just going to chime in on um, equal access. I think that's one of the things that we really worry about when we talk about educating kiddos and um, equal access. Well, we all know that not all kids have one to one and they all have their iPads, but we do know that you can use WebEx on a phone or you can use WebEx on your home computer. And so for those kids that didn't come pick up their iPads, they're using their home devices. Those kids that don't have those devices, if there's not a device in the home, then there's usually some money in schools, especially title schools, to have um, devices purchased for that building and so forth that kids could check out. Um, but also the thing about equal access is when you're teaching virtually, um, these teachers, they do live classes, but they also record those classes. So if you've got a kiddo that has to watch a sibling because mom and dad are working during the day and they can't attend class until evening, then, then they can go on the recorded video and still get the same equal access to the same education that the other kids had when they were there at 10 o'clock. So I think when we talk about, is it fair to all kids? Are we all getting the same thing? Virtual learning, it covers it all. Even that kid that has to stay home because mom and dad have to work or because they have a sick brother or sister they have to attend to. So I feel really good about that. I think that's a positive influence moving forward to education. Yeah, those are those are great closing thoughts. And, and I'll just throw one in for myself. Uh, I was a teacher a long time ago, but now that I'm back to teaching my kids at home, I think that one of the things that will come out of this is a, an appreciation for educators like you, and I really mean that, because uh, uh, it is not an easy job. I mean, what you all are describing, it's not just about the content that you're, you're teaching in the class or, or, you know, just the administrative stuff. It's all those relationships that you're managing. It's connecting those dots. It's all the things that, that need to happen that aren't part of your job description that, that you have to help facilitate to get to that end goal of, of educating your students, keeping your parents uh, involved and informed um, and really developing that sense of community. So um, I, I'm certain that that's already happening, but I think that's going to be a big, uh, uh, a big shift as well. So um, with that, I want to thank you all for for joining and uh, for sharing this. I think all of these, the educators that are going to be hearing this around the globe will really appreciate your insights. Um, and I look forward to checking back with you, you know, in six to nine months when we're in whatever we are going to call next year's school year uh, to see how it's going and kind of kind of get your advice and thoughts on on uh, where to go next. So uh, thanks uh, again, Angela, Kathy, Amanda, Drew, and uh, we will talk again soon. Thank you.